Welcome to Real Estate Investing Abundance, the show for busy, fulfilled professionals like you to learn how to develop financial independence built on solid, passive real estate investments. Now, here is your host, Dr. Alan Lomax. Hello, enlightened investors. Welcome back to Real Estate Investing Abundance. I'm your host, Dr. Alan. I'm so glad you are with us today. And I know you're going to enjoy today's show as we are looking at the altar of yield lies the debt fund with risk adjusted returns. And we have a brilliant expert with us today, Todd Piggott. And Todd is the principal and president. He oversees Zinc Financial, a licensed lender having originated and serviced $1 billion in loans and the Zinc Income Fund, a vehicle for investors to benefit from Zinc's lending. And I'm so glad you are with us, Todd. Just give us a little bit of background as to how you got into the lending business. Absolutely. Hey, Alan, first, thanks for having me on your show. I hope I can provide some benefit to your listeners today. I'm excited to be here and, and share my journey. Uh, how I got into the lending business, uh, Zinc is kind of comprised of three entities right now. Zinc Realty, we, we fix and flip properties. We've done over 100, 100 million in fixing and flipping uh, properties throughout the California region. Then, of course, we have the Zinc Income Fund. That's our Reg D offered uh, mortgage fund for investors to participate in to uh, get high yield with uh, low risk. Uh, all of it secured with first position uh, liens. And then finally, Zinc Financial is our lending arm. We are a licensed lender, same licensing as Wells Fargo. We lend to real estate investors across the nation in 35 states who participate in bridge lending, fix and flip lending, rental lending, or construction loans. And how I got started is uh, kind of an interesting journey. Um, I was born in Southern California, moved to Central California. My dad was vice president of Pacific Life Investments out of Southern California, we moved here at a young age. We ended up going through some problems here. My, my parents ended up divorced and I ended up uh, uh, on welfare. And so what happened was I ended up at Fresno State during that time uh, attending what I really was passionate about was construction and finance. I loved it from a very, very early age. Um, I played water polo and swimming and was attending on a scholarship. But unfortunately, because of my economic condition, I needed to make money very, very badly. I, we, I won't get into all the details, but the welfare at that time was very, very, very problematic. So at any rate, uh, my mom and I were, were broke. I started cleaning buildings. And, and with that, I built that company up over about 17 years to about three states, 500 employees. I did not enjoy that line of work at all. Um, it was facilities maintenance, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. I worked about 85 to 90 hours a week. I was in an automobile accident in 2005. I ended up in a trauma unit, multiple broken bones. And what I decided at that point is, even though I had that facilities maintenance business of, of a number of years, my degree and my passion was in finance and real estate and construction. That's where I really got my degree. That's where my interest lies. I was in a facilities maintenance business really by default. But when I was in that accident, I made a choice laying on the side of the road that if I got out of this thing, I would not be doing what I don't enjoy and I would follow my passion. So I was in the hospital, multiple surgeries, a wheelchair, and I, I overcame that obstacle. And when I got out, I sold that company and I rolled the profits from that company, sold it to a private equity firm into Zinc. And that was late 05, 06. And so what I started doing at that time is I started rehabbing properties with the intent of rent rolling them up or fixing them and selling them to earn a profit. It did fairly well. I did multifamily and then I did single family residential. And eventually what happened is after a period of time, investors started coming to me and saying, hey, can you help us? And so I formed Zinc Financial, an offshoot of Zinc at the time, where we started lending to investors who did uh, fix and flip, bridge or rental properties. And that started to grow substantially. We became one of the largest lenders in the state for distressed asset lending uh, back in that mid-2000 uh, period, uh, lending to good qualified borrowers that have good credit, that have good liquidity, that are real estate entrepreneurs that buy distressed properties with the intent of rehabbing them and reselling them for a profit, just like I did. And so it's done exceptionally well. But then after a while, I started to have other people come to me and said, you know, geez, we see the interest yield in this and we want to participate. And so then I started the Zinc Income Fund. It's a registered fund, Reg D filings, regulated by the Securities and Exchange Commission. 
And so people, everyday people out there can invest in real estate passively, earning an excellent yield with fully protection of principal. We have zero investor losses. Uh, so uh, investors invest in our zinc income fund, credited investors, and we take that money and then we lend it out on uh, distressed properties to real estate investors. And so our, our investors in the fund earn a, a solid yield of eight and a half percent, you know, roughly um, with protection of principal because it's first position loans. And then our, our, our investors in, in the zinc financial side or our borrowers rather uh, do quite well as, 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 as well because they have obviously access to that capital relatively quickly to buy properties that are in some element of disrepair with the intent of rehabbing those up to conventional standards and then reselling those for a profit or rent rolling them up and putting a conventional financing on it. I'm very passionate about what I do. I absolutely love it. Um, it's it's kind of a win-win. I call it my I call it my quadruple win. You know, our investors in the fund win because they get a passive investing experience in real estate with solid yield protection of principal, number one. Number two, my borrowers win because they get access to that capital to buy distressed properties with the intent of rehabbing and reselling those. So that they they do well. They make twenty five to fifty thousand dollars on a flip. I'm just being approximate there. Sometimes more, sometimes less. And of course, the neighborhood and the community wins because that distressed property. We all have them. We've all everybody, all your listeners. We all have a distressed property in our neighborhood. So one with the overgrown bushes, the overgrown grass. The Christmas lights are up in the summer. You know, the broken car in the front with two flat tires and you know, pit bull dogs running around the front yard in a chain link fence or whatever it might be. But we all have those distressed properties. The number three win is a, a kind of a victory is the neighborhood wins because that house is cleaned up, repainted the yards. And so the neighbors, neighbors are often thrilled with us when they see us pull up to a property. You know, they've been wanting that squatter out or that, that drug house out or whatever it might be uh, to be resolved. And so the neighbors are, are very, very happy to see us renovating neighborhoods. And then finally, uh, the first time home buyer wins because they get uh, into a newly rehabbed home. So very passionate about what I do. I'm very, very bullish on the market right now. And I'd love to share some of my insight on that when I get a moment. But uh, for right now, that's how I got into the business and what I'm doing today. Well, fascinating uh, story, Todd. It's, um, I hear I hear so many times that, uh, that people really find their passion at the lowest point in their lives. And I know that was certainly the case for me. And it was probably about the same age as you were, something like uh, 38, 39 years old. And um, that's how old I was. I was 36. Yeah. yeah. And okay. I, I was not happy with my career. And I really never was. And uh, I did that out of necessity. You know, when you're broke, truly broke, you'll do whatever you need to do to, to make a living. At least that's how it was back in the earlier days. Not sure it's that way today, but back in the earlier days, it was really a fight for survival. You know, you would work at you know, nights, weekends, holidays, whatever it took. And I did that. I worked every Thanksgiving for 10 years and every Christmas for 10 years. So I didn't enjoy that line of work. And so during that accident at one of the lowest points in my life, when I was in and out of surgeries and sitting in a wheelchair, boy, that's another story. When you get brought down to your knees in life, that's that's when you find out what's important, you know, family, God, and, you know, time, time. And so I realized that very quickly at that point in time and decided I wanted to do something that I enjoy more so than the previous thing. And I, I that was a low point. Um, when you are incapacitated, that is a low point, I think, for any of us that have been there. And uh, obviously, that was my time to reflect that well, when I get out of this, um, I, I want to make a change in what I'm doing. Yeah, and it, it it's always always interesting to me to that people find their purpose, their meaning, and their whole lives turn around. And uh, I mean, that was most certainly the case for me. And just uh, looking back on the years before that, I mean, they just seemed like such a waste. And since then, my whole life has been purposeful and meaningful. I've worked harder and longer but with meaning and purpose than what I ever did before. I would, I would say I'm there as well. I work harder and longer now, but I'm exceptionally passionate about my platform, what I'm doing for my investors in the fund, and what I'm doing for my borrowers out there in the field. I absolutely am at a point in my life where I don't want to do the transaction or take on a borrower or take on an investor if it's not going to be fruitful or beneficial for all. Um, I'm fine financially. I, I'm not looking for, uh, I've already had all the toys 
I don't need those toys any more in my life. I've got three kids and I've got a wife and I'm very, very content with what I have, financially fine. So I'm at a point in my life where I want to provide value. I want to provide value and I want to provide opportunity for those around me. Yes, I want to be paid, but by the same token, um, it has to fulfill a purpose and has to fulfill a need and it has to be good for everybody. Otherwise, I really, I just don't want to do it. So my investors in my fund are very well taken care of. As a matter of fact, I post a $500,000 cash that, uh, that protects them. So, if, you know, I'm a first loss position on the fund. So, you know, I do that because I care about them and I want to have purpose and I want them to be taken care of in the same way that I want my borrowers to be taken care of. So to your point, I think we all have a point in life where we realize what's important. Mine was in that accident. And I knew at that point in time how, li- how short life can be. Um, and, and with that, we, we make a change. And, and I did, and I'm happy I did. And I, I like what I do and I work very hard at it. I work 10 to 12 hour days, but I do that as a choice because I'm just very driven in, in what I do. And, and I want to, I want to continue with this uh, at the pace that we're going. We are talking with Todd Piggott and you can find Todd at zincinvesting.com. That's Z I N C. I N V E S T I N G dot com. Todd, explain to us what is your strategy to drive consistent yield for your investors? So the question is what do I do to drive consistent yield uh, for my investors in the zinc income fund? So uh, we've done about a billion of this. That's a big number, and I fixed and flipped 100 million. My utmost number one priority is protection of principle. The highest protection of principle available to us in the United States is by way of a secured lien with constructive notice at the county recorder that's insured. So what I mean by that is we have what's called fee simple ownership here in the United States. It's different from um, other countries. Uh, we, we have a, a parcel that is identified with an APN that we have ownership in that cannot be taken uh, from us in any manner whatsoever. And we have, the, we have the rights to enjoyment of that property. That is our property. We own that. There's only three things that supersede that. Most people don't know this. You know, I can do whatever I want with my property, real property, uh, outside of eminent domain, um, outside of eminent domain, uh, taxation, those supersede us, or a thing called police powers. And that's not police departments. Police powers are afforded to the counties and government. If you're doing something very, very wrong with your property, if you're running a drug ring out of it or, or something that's dangerous, we, you know, the county has the right to come in and take that, take that property and seize it. But, but outside of police powers, eminent domain, and the right to taxation for the betterment of the community, we have all the rights and privileges to that property. It's a real property. And so that is the most secure investment we have here. It's not a personal loan. It's not personal property. It's not a car. It's not a, it's not a horse. I see, I see that as your logo. You know, it's a piece of real property. So how do I provide yield? We... We have the most secure vehicle right in front of us for securing our principal, and that is a first lien position on real property with constructive notice. And what do I mean by that? It's been recorded at the county recorder, and it's been insured with an ALTA policy, American Land and Title Act. So that is the most secure that we can get in the United States. And so my protection of principle is absolutely number one. So we secure that, that property. We secure that house. We have that first position lien. And so the people that invest with me, with me, because I'm fully invested in my fund. And as I mentioned earlier, I post a $500,000 cash amount that's held by the trustee. And, and that's in front of all of my investors. But all of our capital inside that fund is secured by the way of first position trustees on these, these houses. Uh, these houses that are going to be renovated and resold, and so so we're we're extremely protected. Who do we lend the Who do we lend that money to? To borrowers. They're going to fix these properties and resell them. But these aren't your everyday borrowers. These are real estate investors, contractors, real estate agents that have experience or exposure to the industry. Furthermore, they have good credit. Furthermore, they have good liquidity. These are people that have good credit. Our average FICO is seven ten. These are people that have money. And these are people that are working hard. The only thing they need is more money to buy that property. And so my fund loans them that money, but we take a first position secured lien. So at the end of the day, if there's non-performance by that borrower, we're going to get that property. They put down 20% in cash. They have good credit. They have good liquidity and they have good experience. 
So the chance of a default is very minimal. We only take back about 1% of our properties. But with that, we get a higher than average yield in our fund, about 10%. And we have some costs and expenses. And so 8.5% rolls to the investor. That's very, very hard to get in today's climate. 8.5% with a secured, actual security against real property is, is very, very beneficial. And there's one more important fact. Our fund, as it's registered with the SEC, gets a 20% deduction on all income earned. So the 199A IRS. So not only do we get 8.5% yield, we're actually getting a 20% deduction on all that income. That really pushes the yield up to about 9.5% with, again, fully secured. So one of the reasons I like this investment vehicle, and I'm fully in it, my dad's fully in it, my friends and family are fully in it, is because we're getting you know, a favorable tax treatment, 20% deduction. We're getting a solid yield. More importantly, it's fully secured. And so that's how I provide good yield, fair yield, above market returns with exceptional protection because we have a first position lien on a piece of residential property that another person put 20% down on that has good credit, that has good liquidity, that has good experience. I don't know that it gets any better than that. I've been in this business for nearly 20 years. We've done a billion. We've had very few losses. Uh, our losses are less than one eighth of 1%, which is negligible. Why? Because we have excellent security. We're always, well, not always, but 99.6% of the time able to extract ourselves from a default in the event that it goes that way. So that's how my platform works. I'm very proud of it. Our investors are very, very happy. And our borrowers are also very happy because they have the opportunity to go out there and get into real estate and earn money, you know, and 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 do what they need to do. I think one of the questions that comes up is why, why would the borrowers pay, you know, above market? Why would they pay 10 and a half percent, Todd? Why don't they just go to a bank and get a lesser rate? Well, that's a great question that many of our your listeners might have. And the, and the, and the reason is this. We are a licensed lender. We have the same licensing as major banks. The difference is that we get our capital privately. We do not have depository. We do not report to the FDIC. We're not a bank. We're a finance company. Although we have the same licensing, we get our capital from private investors. A bank is regulated by the FDIC. And so a bank gets their money from the FDIC. And as such, they're actually prevented from lending on distressed properties. Anybody that's ever sold a home out there understands that the smoke alarm's got to be working, the CO2 got to be working, that GFI by the kitchen sink must be working, and that self-enclosed gate by the pool area must also be fixed. We've all been there. We've all seen that. That's because government-backed financing or government-backed banks are prevented, for the most part, from loaning on distressed properties. So banks can't do it. They're also too, too, too long of duration to complete the loan. So they're not a good fit for this space. As a result of their lending parameters, we are able to step in and go, gosh, we found a market niche. We'll loan on that distressed property. That's a great purchase. You're buying that property for 200. It's in a neighborhood that's 300. We're loaning at 80% of that lowest purchase point, which is only gonna go up in value when you increase the value of that home by rehabilitating it. So I actually think our loan product is actually safer than the, than the federal government's, which loans up to 97.5% of the finished product. But to that point, borrowers use us because of our speed, ease, and reliability. They're willing to pay a higher interest rate because we can close in nine to 10 days and we're not concerned about the condition of the property because we know that property is gonna rehab be rehab rehabilitated up to conventional standards and, and bought and sold. Where a bank or FHA or Fannie, Freddie, whatever, can't do a loan on that property because of its condition. So borrowers, real estate investors per se, are happy to pay the inter extra interest rate, uh, which benefits my investors in the fund and benefits myself. They're happy to pay that. Uh, we, we fund in seven to 10 days. We get them the money to buy that junky property and, and fix it up in about six months and then turn it and make a profit. So that's a little bit more on, on our safety mechanism for how that works so well. Enlightened investors, if you haven't done so already, be sure and click that like button and also click that share so others can take advantage of the content. And finally, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single one of our upcoming episodes. Enlightened Investors, we are talking with Todd Piggott, and he is with Zinc Income Fund, and you can find Todd at Zinc Investing 
www.thinkingdigital.com. Todd, I appreciate you really talking about the security of a real estate investment. Investors who have been investing in the stock market and various different 401ks and IRAs and different instruments like that feel secure in the stock market and mutual funds and so on and so forth. It always amazes me how they can feel secure in those particular assets that have no hard asset backing them. Uh, you can purchase a stock one day and it can drop to zero the next day. And You're absolutely correct. And this fascinates me. The stock market is just this. You are, I, I don't, I really have a hard time. It's, it's the biggest scheme of all time. You're buying stock in a company. You are a class B stockholder in an entity with zero security. You're actually seventh in line to get paid back in the event of a calamity. Seventh in line. If that company starts to have financial problems that you invest in any company, you're a class B shareholder. That's all you are. The secured lenders get paid back. That's first position is a secured lender on the real estate. Then you've got your UCC1 on personal property. Then you've got your lines of credit. Then you've got your bank loans. All six of those players are in front of you to get paid back. You are a stockholder, a class B stockholder in the stock market. Now, you just simply have no security. Worse yet, you're invested, the stock market trades at a multiple of earnings that is really unsubstantiated in the real world. You're, you're buying a company, stock in a company that's trading times 20 times earnings or 30 or 40 times earnings. I mean, Google at one time was 100 times earnings. That is not the real value of that company. No company sells for 20 or 80 times earnings, yet you're investing in that entity with no security. Your only out is hoping that somebody behind you buys that stock at a higher price. That's it. And so I don't like that because although the stock market has been ripe with gains recently, at the end of the day, I have no security. There are many stocks that I can point to right now that are everyday brands that have gone down 30, 60, 50 large swings. Mm -hmm. And and that to me, uh, I did the stock market. I did it. I've been I've done every investment you can think of in my 20s. And I did not like that I was always seventh in line in the stock market to get paid back. My only hope of realizing a profit is somebody behind me, some, some other sucker's going to buy that stock at a higher price. God forbid we talk about Bitcoin. I don't even know what that whole thing is. What do you have there? That is the, the only value in that currency is what other people deem that value to be. Look, I like MySpace, $1 billion of houses. I could pull my pickup truck to any piece of collateral, park right up front and say to my investors, we own this. There's, there's the dirt. There's that property. And I understand that very, very well. I understand that I can pull up and say, we own that. And we are first in line because we have a first position secured lien on that piece of property recorded at the county recorder with an Alta insurance policy. And to me, at my age and how hard I've worked for my money, that's what I want to see. And that's what I do for my investors. I'm not a fan of the stock market because although we've had some recent gains in that over the last few years, simply put, there is zero security. You are a class B shareholder with absolutely nothing other than a, 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 a nothing. Is your seventh in line to be paid back. The secured lenders will get paid in the event of calamity on that, on that stock. The secured lenders will get paid. The people with the property, the real property, they will get paid. Um, those secured lines of credit issued by the banks, they will they will get paid because they've you know done that. The, the, the fixtures of that company, all personal property, the, the the convenience store, you know, the racks, the shelving, that's all personal property. It's called a, you need to get a UCC one filing against that and file it at the state. All that they get paid back because they have a UCC one filing, so they get paid back. So everybody gets paid back. You're just seventh. And I don't, and I don't like that. And and boy, when those swings start to become thirty and forty percent on some of these stocks, which I can readily name right now, that is very. Some of them are down ninety percent. I mean, how does that happen? You know, how does that happen? There's simply no assets behind that other than a ticker symbol and 
some illusionary profit that's trading times 30 times earnings. So I'm just a point to my life where I don't want to risk that. I don't have any security. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know the management of that company. You know, at the end of the day, I like, I like homes, uh, duplexes that have cash flow that we can, that you and I can go park in front and go, well, you know, we own that. We have a lean against that and we have that. And, and that's really, really powerful. And that's why I tend to focus on, on that, on that type of asset class as opposed to others. I just couldn't agree with you more. And it, it, it just astounds me. I, when I was working full time and had my W-2 job in higher education, of course, there were the retirement plans out there through the company. And, I, and you know, every year I, or every, every month, I looked at those to see what kind of yields they're getting. And, and every month, it's very disappointing, you know, maybe three, four uh, percent increase. Uh, Correct. And, and like you're saying, the class B uh, holder, all seven other people are going to get paid before I do if, if, if those particular stocks go belly up. And then there's the, you know, the hundred year trends. The Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco did a hundred year uh, investigation of all asset classes and real estate over that 100 years has proven to be the highest yielding uh, investment. Beyond that, like you mentioned, it is secured. And you, you mentioned it's not only a tangible asset, the title on that is secured. And there's another insurance policy on that. You have that property is, uh, has a homeowner's uh, insurance policy on it. So you've got it secured and you've got it two insurance policies. We, we've up. got it. You're absolutely correct. We we have our property, the actual rights to that property, what's called constructive notice. We have that lien recorded at the county recorder. That's that's paramount. On top of that, our lien, our lien is actually uh, insured. In other words, we, we bought a title policy that ensures us that that lien is real mm-hmm. and that that property there is real and that there's no fraud. So we have an insurance policy on the transaction and then the property itself is insured with a hazard policy. So that house is insured physically, and then our lien is insured logistically, and we're in first position outside of taxes or eminent domain. You can get no higher security in the United States than what I'm presenting here today. It doesn't exist. Other countries, the, the government can take that property. They can seize it. You don't really own it. You just kind of rent it, lease it. Cuba, you don't own anything in Cuba. Uh, Russia, you really don't own anything. So but in the United States, we own that. We we own that fee simple ownership outside of taxation, eminent domain, or a thing called police powers. And boy, it's just it's 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 paramount that your listeners understand that if they worked hard for their money, as I did, it didn't fall out of the sky or grow in my backyard. That I only want to put that in the safest vehicle I can put it. And I have found over my last eighteen years, there's no other safer vehicle than a lien on real estate, especially housing, which is very desirable today and very needed today. And has done very, very well across our country holistically over the last 70 years. So yes, we've had little bubbles, but right now it's it's uh, it's there's a big gigantic lapse in need versus availability. So prices are remaining elevated right now and they continue to remain elevated. So our our capital there is is what I would say very, very safe across the country. And uh, because of the demand for housing, the demand for entry level housing is is outstripping the supply very, very quickly. So, yes, uh, I can't think of a better asset class to be in than, than what we're in. I sleep very well at night knowing that uh, my investors are secured. We take IRA money. You know, they're IRA. I have a lot of, almost a third of our investors are IRAs. And they, they see that 8.5% clicking every single month. And again, secured. Where IRAs in the stock market are not secured. They're susceptible to swings. They're susceptible to downgrades. You could, you could lose the whole thing. And so that's just, uh, I've already been through a couple of those swings and I didn't like it. And so I'm not, I'm not a fan of that. Mutual funds are also very difficult. They rarely, with their fees and their load structure, they, believe it or not, they're, they're really, really not very desirable, you know? So anyway, those are, those are my thoughts. Well, excellent thoughts, Todd. And we are visiting with Todd Piggott and he is with Zinc Inc., and you can find uh, Todd at zincinvesting.com. Thank you so much, Todd, for being with us today. And Enlightened Investors, thank you for joining us once again today. And I hope you got a great deal out of today's conversation. I know that I did. 
uh, we had some wonderful discussions about particularly security of real estate investments. So thank you for being with us. Please take a moment to like, share, and subscribe, and take a moment to go to your favorite podcast app and leave us a rating and review. We will be most grateful. Until next time, live abundantly in all areas of life, and we'll see you in the next episode. Enlightened investors, wait, wait, don't go just yet. I just want to remind you about our recently launched webinar that you will not want to miss. If you're at all curious and would like to learn more about how real estate investing can diversify your investment portfolio, alleviate the anxiety associated with Wall Street swings, leverage your 401ks and IRAs to substantially increase the return on your investment, and do all of this with turnkey, hands-off, passive real estate investments, then you'll want to immediately go to stetalker.com forward slash webinar. In the webinar, we'll also address the common dubious investment schemes that you want to avoid. To access the webinar, go to stetalker.com forward slash webinar. I look forward to seeing you in the webinar. Thank you for tuning in to Real Estate Investing Abundance brought to you by Steve Talker Capital a company working for passionate professionals like you to develop financial independence built on solid, passive real estate investments. As part of our efforts to make the world a better place, Steve Talker Capital contributes to activities and organizations committed to better understand the equine. These endeavors attempt to enhance the human treatment of horses worldwide. Steve Talker Capital, working for a world where all creatures, great and small, flourish abundantly. For resources to develop your financial independence, connect with us at stevetalker.com.